Today on Monkey Life, Orangutan Gordon tries to come to terms with growing up. Right now, we're still having a bit of a problem with the ladies realizing Gordon's inner beauty. Chippy wows the woolly ladies. Sarah looks as if she finds him quite attractive, actually. And the park says goodbye to one of its elderly residents. Uncas was always near Alice's side, right up to her last days when she wasn't very well. Monkey World, nestled deep in the English countryside, is the largest sanctuary of its kind on the planet. The team, led by Dr. Alison Cronin, rescue and rehabilitate abused and neglected primates from all over the world. Hey, you! Hey, fluffy boy! Wow, what a beautiful coat on him. The park provides a home for more than 240 monkeys and apes, and the aim is to give them as natural a life as possible. At Gordon's orangutan enclosure, the boss is taking some exercise with his family. Gordon is now 14 years old and head of the group. This year has really been Gordon's year to just shine, develop and grow up into an amazing man. I mean, it's just quite shocking to me because the changes in Gordon have almost happened overnight. It's just simply amazing to see that that little tiny baby that I knew from 14 years ago is now a huge male orangutan and even bigger than Tuan now, I think. A far cry from when he was born at the park. This is Gordon. Gordon arrived prematurely and it was touch and go whether he would survive. He was rejected by his mother, Amy, and had to be hand-reared by primate care staff, but every effort was made to keep him going. We had nasogastric tubes, pediatric drips for him. I had human friends who, of mine who were human doctors coming in to help consult on him, the local pediatrician coming in to help fix all of his drips and tubes. The fact that he's alive is a miracle in itself, really. The team's hard work paid off. It's just magic, and you know, I feel really pleased for him, and to see him in the physical state he is now just goes to show that we've done the right thing with Gordon over the years, and he's thriving. The last 12 months have seen dramatic changes in Gordon's appearance. He's gone from an adolescent boy to a fully mature male with the stature to show. His increasing size has meant a change in his behavior. Whereas he used to fly around and run and play with everybody up in the climbing frame, you know, where you start becoming an adult, it's not very easy to throw all of that muscle mass with the massive shoulders and the big head around up in the climbing frame. So, you know, along with Gordon's newfound manhood has become a more sedentary life. So he's spending more time down on the ground and is a little bit less active and agile than he used to be. As he's grown, Gordon has developed huge cheek pads on the side of his face. Most adult male orangs have these, but they don't seem to serve any practical purpose. It is like the peacock theory. The cheeks are there to show any females out in the forest that they approach within their territory that I am a fully established, mature, proper male orangutan who is successful at what I do, defending my territory and being available and ready for all of the ladies that are within my territory. But whilst Gordon might have all the physical attributes, he's got a bit of finessing to do on his courtship skills. Right now, we're still having a bit of a problem with the ladies realizing Gordon's inner beauty. His amorous advances have upset Arme so much that for now she's being kept separate from Gordon and they have to take it in turns to use the outside enclosure. Look what I got. Look at that. I'm quite worried really. I because she loves hanging around babies and uh, how can she get pregnant if she sort of scared to uh, male? Hopefully though. I don't know, touch wood, finger cross, one day she will change her mind and she will sort of accept Gordon is the man. Never know. 
Hopefully with time, Ame will respond to some gentle coaxing, but Gordon's still got a lot to learn. Gordon's mental and social abilities really need to catch up with his body, and it's left him a little bit out on a limb. He's now fully matured, but doesn't really know how to deal with the ladies. They're keeping him at arm's length, and it means that he spends most of his time sort of sat on his own. Like a teenage lad, you know, he's actually fully mature, but mentally he's really not there yet, and he's got a long way to go before the ladies are gonna love him as much as we do. At the Woolly Monkey House, they now have a new dominant male to welcome. Last night, 12-year-old Chippy arrived at the park, and they're hoping he'll take over as head of Bueno's old group. His young pal Bronco came with him. The boys are, have been quite calm overnight. They've done really well, settled in really well, and so we're going to go ahead and, and try and get everyone together. Uh, first plan will be to try and introduce everyone except Jarima and Ava. We're going to be a little bit cautious there because obviously Ava is still very young and we don't know how Chippy's going to react to such a tiny baby. Since Bueno passed away, the family has been without a leader to make them feel secure. Five-year-old Paolo has ambitions in that direction. He's full of bravado as he rushes into the playroom. But he's not so brave when big boy Chippy enters. It's an anxious moment as the two males meet, but Chippy doesn't need to throw his weight around. Paolo looks thoroughly intimidated by Chippy. He is quite a big boy, so um, I'm not sure Paolo's particularly pleased that someone else has come over and taken over the group. Chippy's more interested in meeting the ladies. Sarah looks as if she finds him quite attractive, actually. They're sort of circling around each other, and then they've all sort of calmed down, and they're, they're sort of all sitting together in the cargo net and just um, trying to get to know each other. So um, he's actually been a bit of a gentleman so far. It's all going so well, they decide to let Chippy meet the rest of the group. Young Enzo is first in, curious to find out what's going on. Yurima, with baby Ava, is more cautious. Yurima at the moment is very protective of Ava. However, she does have to make friends with this new male, um, so she has quite a fine balancing act to do, um, to try and go up and snuffle the male and be nice and friendly to him, but also make sure that Ava's sort of kept out of the way of that as well. Chippy has a vital role to play as father figure to the group, so it's essential that he makes a good impression on Mum Yurima. The other newcomer, Bronco, isn't so confident. His mother died when he was young, and this big change is daunting for him with so many new faces. Of course, we don't really know little Bronco that well at the moment, so we have to take everything at his pace. He's just sort of sitting in a bedroom, just taking it all in, um, and hopefully he will venture out eventually. Yurima seems to like what she sees of handsome Chippy. She's even confident enough to let baby Ava go off and explore by herself. Bronco's weighing things up and so far has noticed nothing to be frightened of, so he finally plucks up enough courage to take a closer look at the others. And very soon, he finds a new friend in young Enzo. It's a promising start for this family. We'll let them all sit inside the house um, and uh, we'll see how the situation goes for the next few days and just let the bond really come together. Things aren't so happy at the Cotton Top Tamarin House. Old age has finally caught up with Alice. After four years of living happily at the park with her companion Uncas, last night she had to be put to sleep. Alice was already elderly when she first came to Monkey World in 2008, after she and Uncas were rescued from a puppy farm in Kent. Since then, Alice and Uncas have been devoted to each other. Uncas was always near Alice's side, even right up to her last days when she wasn't very well. Um, Uncas was never very far away from her, so he was very, very devoted to her. Now, Uncas has been left on his own, and with no more cotton tops at the park to team up with, he's having to make do with Jethro for company. Jethro's the only Saki monkey here, so they're both in need of a friend. They kind of more just um, share the same living space as opposed to really interact with each other. 
So um, it is better than him being in a house completely on his own because he does have someone else that he can watch and he can see what he's doing and if he wants to go and interact with him then he does at least have that option to do so. They're trying to keep Uncas occupied with extra treats throughout the day. And they can't leave Jethro out. I've got some of Jethro's favourite things. These are some nuts. He absolutely loves his nuts, but he doesn't normally get them in shells, so um, that should provide a little bit of enrichment for him as he's got to crack them open to get the nuts out inside. The nuts are hidden alongside Uncas's favourite, waxworms. You ready, Jethro? But Jethro wasn't expecting to have to work to get at the yummy bits. He's quite an old man now. He's a little bit fussy as well and perhaps a little bit lazy. Um, so these nuts which are in shells, he's not really figured out what he needs to do to actually get to what he would normally be eating inside. Uncas doesn't fare any better with the nuts. But at last, he finds something more to his taste. Insects make up quite a huge part of their diet out in the wild, um, and he would spend um, a very large proportion of his day um, hunting and foraging around to get the insects. Um, so the fact that we can replicate that here for him and include insects as part of his diet is very, very important. So far, Alice's death hasn't affected how the boys relate to each other, but it's very early days. They live quite happily side by side, but it is just a case of kind of um, passing each other by, um, and that's not really changed at the moment, but obviously you never know what will happen in the future. At the Woolly Monkey Enclosure, Primate Care staff are preparing for the next step with new leader Chippy and his young friend Bronco. They're all getting on really good. Everyone is starting to make friends and we can see some real bonds happening. We're getting to the stage now though where they are getting a bit fed up being tied into the house and so it's probably time to give them their outside area now. With everyone still finding their place in the group, the team are doing all they can to head off any aggravation. I'm sure they're all going to be well distracted by um, the enclosure itself. And just to make sure that no one's competing for any food, we've put lots of extra stuff out there. So as well as breakfast, we've also put a nice scatter out there as well. So they've got some cereals and some nuts and things like that. They're all keen to get into the fresh air. It's all new ground for Chippy, but he makes himself right at home. Chippy's come out and all he's done is take his time to go and explore this new enclosure. He's quite comfortable in the, the, the fact that this is his territory now. This is his new family. He's happy in that knowledge and now he needs to learn where his boundaries are. Chippy's getting to know every inch of his new ground. He's making sure that he knows where everything is so that in the future, if he needs anything, he remembers where all these different things are within the enclosure. Young Bronco isn't used to such big open space. Where he was born and where he's lived until he arrived at Monkey World, the outside was just a, a small cage area, so this is a brand new experience for him to have absolutely nothing over his head and just be able to see the sky and nothing in between it. So I imagine it's probably a little bit scary for him. But he's finding comfort in Eurema. Bronco lost his mum at an early age, so he's had to manage without a mother's guiding hand for most of his life. Bronco has just leapt on this chance to have a really nice female in his life and simply isn't letting Yurima alone. Um, and he's fascinated by the baby, of course, as well. He's never seen anything younger than himself before. It's been a big change for all the group, but with Chippy showing no hesitation in taking charge of his ready-made family, it's all looking good for the future and young Bronco has fitted right in. 
He's having a fantastic time. He's got a new little friend in Enzo. He's got a new little baby sister in Ava. And I'm sure Ava's going to join in in their games in a few months as well. So he's having a brilliant time. Jeremy and Lewis are in Rostock on the north coast of Germany. They've brought over young orangutans Xiaoning and Miri, who are about to start a new life in Rostock Zoo. They'll be living in the brand new ape center, which is purpose built with every mod con. Xiaoning and Miri hadn't met before the journey, but they spent yesterday getting to know each other. And Sabas, the eight year old male they've come to join. For the first 24 hours, their meetings were not amicable. At this age, it's like, like kids, they, it doesn't really matter. It's all huff and buff and anything you can do, I can do better and all this sort of stuff. It's very unlikely that we don't reach some happy medium because they all want company, they all want to play, they all want to hang out and they're all a bit lonely and they all want the same, they've all got the, the same sort of requirements. But it's vital that they do all get to like each other. Orangutans are an endangered species, and these three have a crucial role to play in the European breeding programme. I think we're all in agreement that orangutans only realistically have a future in captivity. That's a horrible thing to, to even contemplate, but I think it's probably where we are. I mean, if you look at the news coming out of Borneo, Right now, it's, it's not, not very good for orangs. In the wild, orangutans can only be found on the islands of Borneo and Sumatra. A century ago, there were over a quarter of a million, but they're now down to about 60,000. That's largely because of the destruction of the rainforests they live in, with 80% of their habitat being devastated by commercial logging in the last 20 years and there's no sign of that slowing down. With that in mind, then we've got to think of the future, and obviously, selective breeding is, is, the, is the order of the day. And right now, we've got this fantastic facility that was built just for that purpose. So let's make use of it. Miri's keeper, Tanya, is convinced this is the only way that Miri will be able to have her own babies. There was no future at all at Twycross. She was in a family group, which is nice, but then they get to a certain age and then Obviously, she can't be with her dad. So coming here is the best option. And it's, I think, I really do think it's going to work. The zoo's director has come to see his new arrivals and hear about the introductions that have been tense. Xiaoning was testing everyone's patience, but Jeremy was sure they'd made the right decision to keep them all together. I do not like in some places people put them together and then separate them. But once they're together, let them, it's up to them. And I don't think either of these two are going to make life threatening injuries. You might get cuts, you might, or you might not. But now it's down to these people. These orangutans, it's down to them. We have done what we can. I would not separate unless you really need to. Let them get on with it. Xiaoning spent all day throwing her weight around, and Sabas was determined not to be outdone. Everyone was hoping things would settle down overnight. This morning, things were much calmer. Hello, Ning Ning. Hello, baby. She looks a lot rested, like more, a lot more fresh. It looks like Jeremy was right. I think they're going to be fine. You're going to be fine, aren't you? And she's doing amazing. She's eating very well. She's, she just doesn't look any stressed, which that, that surprises me, but I'm so pleased. Xiaoning made her feelings very clear to Sabas, though. He's taken a shine to quiet her Miri. I don't feel as sad as I thought I would. It's a nice place, beautiful outside, nice keepers. And she's got a boyfriend. What more could she ask for? 
Xiao Ning's got plenty of time to make amends when she feels like it. It's been brilliant so far, so I, I'm really happy leaving her here. Um, she's kind of settled, she's eating well, she knows the new keeper, she likes them, she likes her two new uh, friends, so it's nothing else I can ask. It's time to take their leave. For all Xiaoning's unruly behavior, they're going to miss her. But Jeremy knows it's for the best. This whole exercise couldn't have gone better. And that's the time to quit. Run away, quit while you're ahead. And I'm really happy with everything at Rostock. The people are great. They obviously know what they're doing. The facility is fantastic. There's no reason to, to worry that I can see at all. And um, on that note, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Next time on Monkey Life. Look at that tongue. There's concern for Siamon Gibbon Sasak. You've got to suspect something fairly serious, but you just can't pin it down yet. And Woolly Monkey Julio comes of age. Really ready to set up his own territory and potentially branch out from Lavar.